inscribe triangle, inscribe quadrilateral, and we have two theorems. We're at 12.4b. So we have one previous video for this lesson, 12.4a, that's in the description if you need it, along with the geometry playlist. So right away for your notes, we have theorem 12.4.3, which says an inscribed angle subtends a semicircle if and only if the angle is a right angle. So we have this red inscribed angle. We can see our right angle mark right here. And if there is a line coming across here, we can see that's a diameter because we have a center point, don't we? This inscribed angle subtends this semicircle, this half top half of the circle, if this angle is a right angle. So as we discussed in the first part of this lesson, 12.4a, subtends. A chord or arc subtends an angle if its endpoints lie on the sides of the angle. When a central angle intercepts an arc, the arc is said to subtend the angle. So back to our theorem and our diagram here, we can see that this inscribed angle has its endpoints right here, see? So we would have this arc, or we would have this chord. We can find angle measures in inscribed triangles. This triangle is inscribed in this circle. It wants us to find x. So take a look at this. We've got circle S. We have points R, Q, and T for the vertices of the triangle. The information is giving us that angle RQT is a right angle. So we know this is a right angle, so 4x plus 6 degrees must equal 90 degrees. We can set that as our equation, and we can subtract 6 from both sides and get that 4x is equal to 84 degrees, divide both sides by that coefficient 4, and get that x is equal to 21 degrees. So we found x. Now it wants us to find the measure of angle ADC. ADC. So that would be this one right here, the 7y minus 1 degrees. And the measure of angle ABC, ABC, this one, it's 10y minus 28 degrees, is equal to the measure of angle ADC because both intercept arc AC. So if you look right here, this one is intercepting AC, and this one right here from this point A to C is also intercepting AC. We can set them equal to each other because they have the same arc. They must have the same measure, right? We have 10y minus 28 is equal to 7y minus 1. We can subtract 7y from each side and get 3y minus 28 is equal to negative 1. That created a zero pair, didn't it? Now, we can add 28 to each side, because we're trying to solve for y, and we get 3y is equal to 27. We can divide both sides by the coefficient 3. We get 1y is equal to 9. We can put the 9 in, substitute it in, and we get the measure of angle ADC is equal to 7 times 9 minus 1, which is 62 degrees. So knowing that they had arc AC in common helped us, didn't it? So for your notes, I have another theorem for you, 12.4.4. And the theorem says if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then its opposite angles are supplementary. So here we have this red quadrilateral inside of the circle, and we can see that ABCD is inscribed in circle E. Our conclusion is that angle A and angle C are supplementary, and angle B and angle D are supplementary. So the two angles whose sum equals 180 degrees. So if we know the measure of this angle, we know that this angle and this angle must equal 180, so we can figure out what angle C is, couldn't we? So we can find the angle measures of an inscri inscribed 
quadrilateral. So here we have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle, and it's telling us that the measure of angle P is 120 degrees. That's given. We can also see this right angle box right here, so we know Q is 90. We can figure out what R and S are with this given information. The measure of angle R is going to be 180 degrees minus that 120, so that must be 60 degrees because they're supplementary. They need to equal 180 together. The measure of angle S is going to equal 90 degrees because 180 minus 90 is 90. If that's 90 and they have to total 180, that must be 90. For this example, they want us to find the value of y. And we can see that angle A is 6y plus 1 degrees, angle B is y squared plus 48 degrees, and C is 10y plus 19 degrees. So we need to find y. The measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C will equal 180 degrees. So A and C must be 180 degrees. 6y plus 1 plus 10y plus 19 should equal 180. We combine like terms. We have 6y and 10y that gives us 16y. We have a 1 and a 19 that gives us a 20. We solve for y. We can subtract 20 from each side. We get 16y is equal to 160. We divide both sides by the 16y coefficient, and we get 1y is equal to 10. Now that we know that the y value is equal to 10, we can find the measures of each angle by substituting 10 for y. Angle A is 6y plus 1, so y is a 10. Angle A is 61 degrees. Angle B is y squared plus 48, so that must be 100 plus 48. It's 148. Angle C is 10y plus 19, so we have 10 times 10 plus 19. That's 119 degrees. And D, over here, if we know that B is 148, we do the 180 degrees, because they're supplementary, minus angle B, so it's 180 minus that 148. We know angle D is 32 degrees. That was from theorem 12.4.4. Now, little caution advice here. Be careful. In this diagram, this segment BC is the diameter of the circle because it goes through the center. We can see point P. But in this diagram, we aren't sure if segment BC is the diameter because there's no center point. So don't assume that a segment or a chord is the diameter because there may not be a center point. It has to go through the center point. It has to be shown to know that it's the diameter, okay? So for our next couple of videos, we're going to need our compass and protractor as a straight edge because we're going to construct the center of a circle in 12.4c, and then we're going to construct a tangent to a circle from an exterior point in 12.4d. So the two important things you should take away from this lesson is from our first theorem over here, this one, an inscribed angle subtends a semicircle if and only if the angle is a right angle. And our theorem here, if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then its opposite angles are supplementary. They have to total 180 degrees. That'll really help you. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you next time. Bye.